Welcome back, everyone. Today's class is brought to you by ECE and his debut album, Risk of Loss. This is probably the hardest album on the streets right now. You can get a copy anywhere they're selling music. They're bound to have it. So um, now that ECE has uh, RIP to the entire music industry when he dropped that album, we're going to talk about what happens when someone is to pass in real life in Florida specifically. Yeah, see what I did there? All right, let's talk about Wills, which is going to be um, the last subject. And Wills uh, follows Purse Therapies in Florida. Is everyone familiar with that? That could definitely be someone's rapper name, Purse Therapies, right? Can anyone explain to me what Purse Therapies means? I can try. Ooh, it's uh, what do you think? Or what, okay, what you so it's, it's hard to explain like with words, but basically, if you say the person who dies has two children and one of those children has two kids of their own. So the, the decedent, the person who dies has two grandchildren um, and the parent of those grandchildren is dead. So if the, like he, the person who dies, the decedent dies without a will, the property passes down the family tree but the interest when it goes from one generation to the other gets split among however many there are in that next generation so basically since this person has two kids of his own um each of them gets half interest like the state is split in half and then because one of the his kids is dead that half interest gets split among his grandkids by that children. So basically his su surviving child gets half interest and then each of his two grandchildren gets a quarter interest. Love that, <laughs> amazing. Um, and I really believe that as you teach, you learn. So May, I'm sure articulating that to the group kind of helped you reinforce what purse therapies means. And you said something interesting to me. You said if someone were to pass without a will, what's the vocabulary for that? Intestate. Yeah, intestate. Um, vocabulary pronunciation is cool. I was learning yesterday about pendente lite and Google tried to trick me into thinking it was pendente light. And I was like, no way, but I had to accept it as true. But wait, no. how do you say it? What? Pendente lite. No, it, did I say, I, do I say, how do I, what, what did I say? Intestate, is that wrong? Intestate, is that wrong? Intestate, 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 intestate. How would someone else say there? I think that's right. Uh, that's how I'd say. I just I didn't realize how I said it and how you said it. I didn't hear a difference. That's same. why I'm asking. You said it the same. And to be fair, I was born in Miami. I grew up in Philadelphia, and I went to college in New Orleans. Those three cities have like the worst accents in all of America. So combined in a pot, I'm in no position to tell people how to pronounce things. But I like to try. I can to. spell it. So yeah, to see. I can definitely say pronounce it. So yeah. yeah. So when we talk about um persterpes it just means that we're going to take on the first level when someone passes we're going to distribute on the first level and if that if mom and if mom and dad pass and there's three children they'll get 33 percent each but now if one of those children is missing well it'd still be 33 33 and then that child's estate will get the remaining 33 percent so if they have two kids it'll be you know 17.5% to each one of those kids. No, 16.5% to each one of those kids. Not a math class. All right, so a little bit. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's look at some, some of the material on wills. Um, I named one of my uh, instructors, Will of Attainer. He didn't like it. I tried to name him Will at Sufferance. He didn't like that either. Oh no, Sufferance or Tenancy at Will. He didn't like that either. So he was XXS post facto. But anyway, now we'll talk about Wills, his real real name. And <clears throat> this, uh, this right here are some practice questions that we'll do next. Let's start with this PowerPoint. It's a little bit more pictorial. So intestacy, intestacy. Only a surviving spouse um, will take. So the entire intestate estate to the spouse. That's what we assume, right? That if you are to pass, the first place it'll go is to your spouse. Now, if you have a surviving spouse and all of the kids are of both of the descendant and the surviving spouse, it'll be the same thing. So like 
if Johnny were to pass and uh, Johnny had a wife and kids, it would just go to Johnny's wife because Johnny's and Johnny's wife's kids all came from, from the same unit. So the thought is that when Johnny's wife passes, then the kids will take. But there is an interesting exception. So if there's a surviving spouse and at least one kid is not the kid of either the decedent or the surviving spouse, right? Like this happens all the time where they have a kid from a previous marriage. Well, then we have to split it up. Half of it will go to the surviving spouse. She'll always get her 50% take, right? The other half will be split equally amongst all the kids. So do we understand the intricacies of this? That now if there's... Um, one surviving spouse and multiple kids, but one of the kids is from a different uh, um, marriage, we're gonna split it equally amongst all the kids. So if there's no heirs, if there's literally nobody to take, and we're gonna try and give it to anyone in Florida, we'll try and give it to your uncles, your aunts, somebody, it'll sheet to the state of Florida. Um, what does an issue mean? It's a, and I'm gonna go over this kind of quickly so I can go over other materials, so I appreciate you all for, understanding the speed of this presentation. The issue is the parent-child relationship. It's like a kid. Adopted kids are treated the same as a natural kid. When you adopt, you take on that natural, that kid as if it's your biological kid. And the original parents have no visitation rights. They have no rights to that kid. They've literally given it up for adoption. The only time it's different is if it's like a step-parent thing and you like adopt a step-kid, well then the original step-mom, I mean, not the original step, the original mom still has rights because it's like a step parent thing it's not like the mom put it up for adoption um that's just a small caveat oh yeah i just said that step parent adoption will not prevent adoptee from inheriting from another genetic parent posthumously born child automatically treated as being be being born before the defendant's death or the decedent's death i keep seeing d as defendant but the decedent's death so this would happen where someone gets someone pregnant and then uh would die it probably doesn't happen with women, if anyone can figure out why not, but it probably is harder to happen because um, if the woman were to pass, then the kid would most likely not survive, but maybe the kid would somehow. Um, okay, calculating issues, shares, persterpes. We talk about persterpes and how things happen. Persterpes, beautiful, a little presentation. Divide a state according to the total number of children who survive, decedent, or leaving surviving issue. So issue will take equal shares regardless of whether anyone in that generation survived. Divide by representation, AKA allows children to represent the deceased parent. That's a great way of, of thinking about it. It allows children to represent the deceased parent on the first sterpial level. Again, I don't know if that's a real word, sterpial, but I use it very often. So on the first sterpial level, we will split. Here, D is alive, one third. This right here will get split between F and G. This right here will go to H. So 33% right here, 33% right here, 16 and a half, 16 and a half. That's per stirpes in, in a nutshell, right? Okay. Again, we're going to do questions this afternoon. We're going to go over some details of some tough questions. I don't want anyone to overlook wills. Wills is actually tougher than it sounds. You have to do practice questions to see like, oh, that's the hypothetical that they could have thought of. I would never consider that. Okay. Will execution. Capacity, 18 plus and sound mind execution, signed by testator, can be anything as long as meant to be a signature, located below the dispositions of the property. Look for that. If they sign it and then they say, Andrew gets the you know, pencils, Brian gets the car, but it's below the signature, that's not gonna be okay. And um, they can be interested or disinterested as, as a witness. Um, I'm sorry, signed by testator in, in front of two witnesses. Um, Witnesses in the presence of the testator and each other who have the ability to observe and comprehend, but no minimum age, they can be interested or disinterested. And then testamentary intent, the present intent to make testamentary transfer. So wills are very interesting documents. You know, today is an interesting lecture in my opinion, because business entities, like I said, right out of getting your license, you could do some contracts for friends, hopefully. Right out of getting your license, you could write wills for people. Wills are very valuable legal documents, right? Everyone needs a will because if they don't have a will, then it's going to um, follow the path of intestacy. Let's think of it from our perspective. Well, I'm probably older than most of you, but from a lot of our perspectives, 
uh, I try to class myself in there, but most people who are students don't have any children. What if they were to pass where, and they had no will, where would all their property go? Does anyone know? To their parents, right? So think about that. Is that really, no, I'm just kidding. But like, you know, for a lot of people, if you don't have a will or one of your friends doesn't have a will, even if they don't have kids, there's still a need to have a will. There's still a need to have a detailed estate plan. And um, as long as you have some sort of assets, because you'd like to control what's going to happen to you. Uh, so I'm just saying that, that today it should get people excited for, hey, passing this test and then using some of the skills I learned in business entities and wills, even if they're not tested in a practical sense to get this money. Because that's what really matters. Um, a codicil. We're all familiar with this word codicil, not codicil, codicil, no. Um, and again, I'm teaching in Miami, everyone speaks Spanish. So it's like pronunciation is crazy down here. And this is a, a legal legalese, but a codicil. A codicil requires the same elements as a will. It supplements a will, but does not replace a will. If a codicil is revoked, the will stands, right? If the will was revoked, then any codicil to the will is revoked as well. Make sense to everyone that the codicil is an amend addendum to a will. And it has to comply with will formalities, right? To be a codicil to a will. You can't just like write a piece of paper. And if you revoke the codicil, it's not revocation of the complete will. But if you revoke the will, then obviously the codicil has been revoked as well. We'll do a question like that. That's puts that into perspective. Any questions so far? Will execution, first therapies, and the codicil? The hardest thing is actually going to be this right here. Some of these scenarios where they have multiple kids and like, we just gotta, we're just gonna have to go through it. So if that's your question right now, please spare me, but I promise we will go through that this afternoon. Um, types of devises. General devise, a gift of property satisfies from general assets of an estate. A specific devise is a gift of a specific piece of property, right? Um, you know, like the car. Uh, a demonstrative vibe is a general gift from a particular source, like, um, you know, money from the stock investments. Residuary device, assets that are left over or not automatic. Facts must state, residue goes to Bob, otherwise will pass through intestacy. Types of devices. Um, this PowerPoint is pretty simple, honestly. Abatement and ademption, are we familiar with these terms? Abatement is when um, basically we're going to uh, lower them down, reduce the amount, we're gonna abate it. Where ademption is a deem that's totally does not exist anymore. So when the estate does not have sufficient funds to pay debt or make gifts, certain gifts will be abated or reduced. Intested property, residuary devices, general devices, demonstrative devices, specific devices. They'll be reduced accordingly. That's uh, called abatement. Whereas ademption is where something has either been extinct or satisfied. Ademption by extinction will make a specific divisor property, but specific piece, a will makes specific, I'm sorry, the will makes a specific divisor property, but a specific piece of property no longer exists. Then um, when the tested dies, the tested dies, the divisor gets nothing, right? So I leave to my son Biscuit, my uh, Jeep, but, before I pass, I sell my Jeep to Tommy. This kid's not gonna get my Jeep, right? It has been deemed. Um, proceeds, intended recipient allowed to take balance of proceeds on the sale if traceable. Traceability is a factor that comes up on the Florida bar in other, in other storms. Um, the tracing rule, it comes up with marital property versus non-marital property where you can trace it back. Here you could potentially trace the proceeds of uh, a redemption like Here's a good example. Andrew gets the Apple stock. Well, we stole the Apple stock, but bought, uh, but kept the money in a bank account. That would be an argument for uh, proceeds if it was intended for me to go there. There's an argument for that. Intent, Florida courts consider the tent in causing specifically devised property going extinct. Exactly, that's what I was just getting at. It's not necessarily going to me in the bank account. There would have to be some intent. Wills is a lot, wills are a lot like trust in settler or testator intent is paramount. We're very concerned with what the person who created the instrument would have wanted. 
if no one knows what they wanted or there's no will and there's tons of people arguing over it, we'll have probate, right? Probate is that process of distributing assets after death when, you know, it's not done, it's not contemplated adequately in the person's life or it is contemplated adequately, but the inheritors are kind of having um, problems, right? It's a very, very tough field of law, but I like estate planning. I think it's good. I think it's very necessary. And it's one of those things that's like planning ahead, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. If you have a good estate plan, then uh, you don't have all these issues at the end. Um, okay, here's the elective share. This is important in Florida. You can elect it if you're a spouse, right? So it's not automatic, but, um, Oh, no, I'm sorry. I skipped a redemption by satisfaction. Let me talk about that first. So a redemption by satisfaction, the tester satisfies a specific demonstrative gift in whole or in part by an interviewer's transfer. T must intend the, for the gift to a deem by satisfaction. Either the will provides for a de deduction of property. The tester declares in a contemporaneous writing that the gift should be deducted. The recipient acknowledges in writing that the gift satisfies the device. So we'll look to the facts. I just want you to know these terms mostly abatement versus redemption, an elective share. So the timing, the earlier within six months after service of notice administration or two years after the um, decedent slash testator's death. So the effect on the surviving spouse, they get 30% of the elective estate and disclaims any other interest in the devising testator's estate, such as anything that's in their will. The effect on others, the elective share is satisfied first. So this may change devises to other beneficiaries. So this is very important. If you are married to a monster, male or female or non-binary or artificially intelligently created, I'm extending my list now. If you're married to something in Florida and you don't want that thing to get anything when you die, please divorce that thing. Because if you're still married to that thing, you risk them taking an elective share. Does that make sense? That's something that you have in Florida. They can elect that share and just take 30% of your estate before anything else happens. That's why you really have to divorce them. Not just separate from them, cold cut them, divorce, file judgment papers on them like Kim and Kanye. Um, all right, contesting a will. Wow, these people need to go to therapy. Standing, only interesting party, reasonably believes will, they will be affected by the act of proceeding, they will benefit under the will, or they would take under incessant succession, but not under the will. They have standing to contest the will. Grounds to challenge a will are testamentary capacity, undue influence, fraud, forfeiture clause, or ambiguity. The burden is on a challenger. This is an important slide. And the last slide. Revoking a will. Methods of revocation. Subsequent instrument, like this officially revokes my previous will. Physical act, I burn it. Operation of law, we get divorced, right? A divorce will take, uh, a divorce will take the wife out of the will. Physical or pretty much revoke the will. Physical act, destruction, tearing, burning, or defacing, and the intent for the act to revoke it. Like if it accidentally burns, that's not going to be sufficient. No partial revocation back in Florida. You can't just like uh, cross out. I can't cross that, that part. If I don't want to give it to my brother anymore, you know, I have to have some subsequent instrument that can conform with will formalities, or I have to completely revoke the will. And then third party revocation only at the direction and presence of the third party. The presence thing is a little bit flexible, I believe. I believe you can do it over Zoom. Like, does he need to see it? Can it be over the phone? I, th I think that it can't be. I had a question about, on, on multiple okay. choice on this a, a few days ago. And what was your response? The I don't really remember the exact detail, like the facts of the of the the, the question, but pretty much, uh, they called them over the phone and said, "I want to revoke the will," um, and then they died. So it wasn't a valid revocation, right? Because it's in their presence. But I do think that they've statutorily defined video teleconferencing as presence almost across the board. I mean, come on, after the pandemic. I know that's a valid for like execution of a will. Invalid, you're saying? No, no like there's electronic uh, like 
um, presence for, for witnesses is allowed in Florida. Right. That's what I'm saying. It is allowed, but probably not over the phone on a will. Yeah, I guess because you're not seeing it. So yeah, it's like, exactly, no like our, exactly like you and I right now, Claudio. I mean, this is no, we couldn't have a will, but Joel and I could have a will right now and, and revoke it, right? There's some uh, formality to presence. That's what present means. You don't have to smell them, but you have to see them. Um, okay, so nothing will work unless you do, said the great Maya Angelou. Um, Maya Angelou. There was also um, like, like you don't have to see it. You could be in the same room, but the curtain too as well. Is that allowed? I, you, I know what you're talking about. There is something like yeah, that. Yeah, like they're, they're in a hospital room and they have the curtain, so they can't see them, but they're in the presence. Yeah. I can't get I think it's okay. I think it's valid, but I don't know. I think it's valid too. They are in the presence. I think right. really, statutorily, they're in the presence. Um, actually, this one's a little bit more detailed. We only have a couple minutes. So essentially, you could smell them, but you could not see them. <laughs> Right. You either have you okay. You have to hear and smell or see. Yeah, you gotta have some one sentence or something. I guess not hearing because then the two cent rule. Is valid. <laughs> the two cent rule. Smelling or hearing or, or seeing. Yeah, I guess that's it. I don't dig too far into the details. I want to dig more into the details of Maya Angelo. Um, you may cast me. At, you may try me with your. What is it? Still I rise, yeah. You may trod me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. That's what it is. You may cast me in his very dirt, but still like air I'll rise. Yeah, Maya Angelou, she's cool. I'm down with Maya Angelou. All right, Slayer statue, that sounds fun. Um, a person who wrongfully participates in the killing of another may not receive any benefits. The property passed of the killer and predeceased the victim. <clears throat> I really like the Slayer statue. Bigamy, intentional bigamous conduct, Bars the bigamous spouse from inheriting the other's estate. Right, that's you know marrying multiple people. Um, talked about half bloods. I, I like that word. Ooh, that could be someone's name. Half blood. Florida provides that half bloods take half as much as whole bloods, except where all collateral kin are half bloods. Uh, Non-marital children, children born out of wedlock, wedlock are heirs of the mother, but not of the father, unless he marries the father, is adjudicated the father before others' death, or acknowledges returning writing. Right? You know you're who the mother is if they're born out of new wedlock, not necessarily a parent. I think in parents, they can do a DNA test and it's 95% accuracy, yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh, definitely one know about this, use SDA, the Uniform Simultaneous Death Act. Um, so Florida has not required the rule that you have to uh, <clears throat> survive the other by 120 hours. So it's, you know, it's relevant. If, if someone died 30 minutes later, then they could take. But if they die together, then we will apply the Uniform Simultaneous Death Act, which means that we assume they predeceased each other. Um, Those problems get a little tricky sometimes. Super tricky. We're going to try and go through some of the tricks this afternoon. I'm re oh, by the way, well, I'll say it on camera. I'm dropping brand new videos this week, like 20, 30 minute videos for every subject, straight to the point, super fire. And what reminded me of that is I said some like, do not get tricked by tricks. I said in one of my videos and I was like, all right, time to film new videos. <laughs> like, I can't say do not get tricked by tricks. What is this? Is it breakfast cereal? Um, oh, holographic wills. So holographic will handwritten and signed, but not properly witnessed. And oral wills are not recognized in Florida, even if they were validly executed in another state, right? We are not going to recognize a holographic will. Military testamentary instruments, a properly executed military testamentary instrument is a valid will in Florida. So as long as it complied with the military formalities, it will be recognized in Florida. By a tester is eligible for military legal assistance in the presence of a military legal assistance counsel in the presence of two disinterested witnesses. Um, in Florida, will we recognize a uh, common law marriage if it was if, if it was valid in another state we'll recognize it in florida but florida doesn't allow for common law marriage exactly that was perfectly executed just like a properly executed will um prenups and postnups we kind of i don't really think they test that much on multiple choice uh 
<clears throat> Ooh, Laps Gifts and anti lap Statue. That sounds fun. Another good name for a rapper, anti lap Statue or an album. A gift lapses if the beneficiary predeceases the testator. Florida's anti lap statute provides that a predeceasing beneficiary surviving decedents will take his shares per serpes if the beneficiary is a grandparent or descendant of a grandparent of the testator, the beneficiary is dead when the will is executed, fails to survive the testator, or is required by the will or by operation of law to be treated as having predeceased the testator. Florida has replaced... Um, the no residue of a residue rule with one allowing the remaining residue beneficiaries to divide the share and property to their interests in the remaining part of the residue. And class gifts. If a will makes a gift to a class, only the class members who survive the testator take share of the gift. A beneficiary dead when the will executed. If a will makes a gift to a beneficiary who is dead at the time the will was executed, the gift is void. We talked about redemption. Um, we talked about the elective share statute and you know you have six months after service of the notice or two months after the death. A pre-termitted child, a child omitted from a will who was born or adopted after the will's execution is entitled to take a share in the intested share had the tester died intested unless he received an advance equal to his intested share. The omission was intentional. The tester and other children left most of the estate to the other parent of the mid child. So pre-termitted child. Um, I talked about contesting a will probate we'll get into that a little bit more this is how creditors claims are going to get paid out expenses of administration funeral expenses up to sixteen to six thousand debts and taxes having precedent under federal law medicaid claims and claims in favor of state for unpaid court costs fees and fines expenses of last illness up to 60 days family allowance a rearage from court ordered child support the student's business debts acquired after the death, the extent of the business asset and other claims. So that's the order. The personal representative must promptly publish a notice to creditors once a week for two consecutive weeks in the newspaper, published in the county where the state is being administered. They must personally serve a copy of the notice on these three creditors within three months after first publication. If the personal rep in good faith fails to publish or serve the required notice, the personal rep is not liable. Any liabilities on the estate. Um, Special forms of administration, summary versus ancillary. Summary administration may apply if the estate value is less than $75,000 or the scene has been dead for more than two years. Ancillary administration, if a non-resident dies leaving assets in Florida, ancillary administration is necessary. If the will and any codicil are executed as required by Florida law, it will be made to probate. Um, personally located in Florida, although subject to ancillary administration is controlled by the I think personal properties is controlled by the law that is seen as domicile and a tester, unless the tester provides in his will that the testament disposition of the property uh, is governed under Florida law, personal property. Um, and then closing administration. When a personal representative has completed administration of the estate, she must prove an accounting to the court and any interested party. If no obligation is filed within 30 days, the assets will be distributed and the personal representative discharged. So again, We'll go over some more details of business entities and wills this afternoon. We started class by doing a review of evidence, criminal law, and civil procedure, criminal procedure. And we're going to do the most important thing this afternoon of all, which is wrap up Florida Multiple Choice by doing three hours worth of questions. We're going to do them all, procedure, evidence, wills, business entities. It's going to be super fun. Um, if you do have time, oh, and we're gonna start off by playing Jeopardy. So come come early for that. And if you do have time over break, we're taking more submissions for rap album of the year. So don't don't hesitate. Thank you all so much. It's been a pleasure. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this recording.